And I just wonder what sort of tsunami is waiting for us if we as a nation continue to talk about street children and child-headed households as though these things are normal. Street children. Hungry, filthy, begging. The victims of extreme poverty, social disintegration, physical violence and sexual abuse. Often we ignore them. Sometimes we give them money. Is there an answer to the seemingly insurmountable problem? A United Nations survey revealed that there are over 400,000 street children in South Africa alone, 30,000 of which are found in the Eastern Cape. Every day we are confronted with shocking headlines of barbaric criminal acts perpetrated on innocent citizens, and we ask ourselves how can people behave like this? Why do they do such evil things? But every criminal was once a child. There is no hospital that gave birth to a child called a street kid. An innocent child, but that child was neglected, abused and broken. A lot of their anger has been bred in them by the way adults have treated them or failed to treat them. And for every action, there is a reaction. It is a mind warp to realize that many of today's vicious, hardened and merciless criminals were once just neglected or abandoned youths. And that it is only strong intervention during childhood that can change the outcome. I believe that it's critical for us to take the needs of these children very seriously. The cost to the country of not taking it seriously is going to be far higher than the cost of starting to build citizens out of our lost boys and girls. Grahamstown. Here there is no industry, jobs are scarce, and unemployment hovers at around 70%. With no prospects on the horizon, there are feelings of hopelessness, anger, despair and frustration. Drug and alcohol abuse are rife, as is violence. The AIDS epidemic has left many as orphans. In a place where the adults are in misery, small wonder that the children suffer neglect at best and abuse at worst. But in the midst of this bleak reality, a unique faith-based primary school is turning the tide, changing our futures, and saving these forgotten children one life at a time. The Amasanga Career School is open to former street children and others from poverty-stricken backgrounds. It offers these children an accelerated bridging education, a second chance to re-embark on their schooling. What sets the Amasango model apart from a shelter is that here, education is used as a means of rehabilitation. But street children have not only been starved of education, they have also been starved emotionally. Love, care and discipline from the staff are the key pillars on which this curriculum is founded. Its name, Amasango Career School, is taken from a well-loved Zulu hymn, Avulakila Amasango, which means the gates of heaven are open. Many doors have been shut on these children, but the school aims to show them that the gates of heaven are open to all, no matter their past. And through the special education, the gates to learning, love and a bright future are open as well. When a pupil first enters Amasango, they are given baseline tests to determine their level of education. Some may even have a report stating that they've passed grade seven when in fact they can't write at all. A 16 year old who testing shows to be at a grade two level cannot see a future if they have to spend a year in every grade. But with the Amasango system, in as little as three years, they can progress through all the grades and onto high school. If that 16 year old child had to return to conventional primary school, they would be placed in a grade two class of children half their age feel embarrassed and foolish and end up dropping out yet again. So the children of Amasango benefit through finding a place of normality. They are the normal at the school. Founder and retired principal Jane Bradshaw has devoted her life to these neglected kids. She believes that they are the most forgotten group of special needs children in the country, if not the world. 
because they have what are termed psychosocial barriers to learning. These are not traditional learning problems, and they cannot be treated in a traditional manner. There are only a handful of schools in South Africa that even try. But over 20 years, Amasango have developed a successful school structure which has proven to rehabilitate these young lives. But how did it all start? Well, the honest truth is that I'd been teaching closer to white kids in state schools for a number of years. And by 1989, I felt I couldn't continue anymore. And I said to my husband, I can't go on. And so I stopped and prayed for about a year and a bit about what I should be doing with my life. And a priest phoned me and said, Jane, I've got a proposition to make. Could I come and have a cup of tea with you? And he arrived and we passed a few pleasant trees. And then he said, I've come to ask you to start a school for the street children. And my adrenaline just rushed right through my body. My heart started palpitating. I was perspiring. And I just knew that this was what I was going to do with my life. When a priest unexpectedly asked Jane Bradshaw to start a school for street children, she had no idea how this would change her life. She started in the corner of an East London church hall in 1991, with a box of second-hand crayons, a ream of old computer paper, and 12 former street children. The school soon grew to accommodating over 100 learners in a converted school structure just outside of East London, where it remains to this day. In 1995, with the East London School established, Jane was asked by Grahamstown's Elo Kolweni Children's Shelter to start another Amasango school in their grounds. The classes had humble beginnings in these two shipping containers. Cynthia Matika, who has been with the school since those early days, remembers the first few years. There were only nine children in one container, and it was very hectic. The children were uncontrollable. They bunk classes, they don't listen when you talk to them. They are also jealous of each other. If you talk to the one, the other one also seek attention. He will disrupt what you are doing. So we have to tell them that we love them all equally. There were two boys that were fighting outside the classroom. It was break time. We had to run going to help the one who was chased by an ex. But what I know that I have to be patient. In my mind, I heard that I want to make a difference to these children's lives. Teaching at Amasango required all of Cynthia's faith and commitment. But as the school grew, things began to change. The children were starting to live a structured life in the shelter and that also made a difference. There was a routine to their lives. These were all children who had literally been living on the streets and who'd had no routine or order in their lives whatsoever. Because it was a Christian-based organization, all the children who lived in the shelter attend church at the cathedral. And so that routine became part of their lives as well. Several of the children asked to be baptised and some have been confirmed at the cathedral. Amasango went from containers into the buildings of Grahamstown's disused train station. Small, run down and crowded, with minimal toilets and no space for play, the school desperately needs a proper building on an appropriate site. After 23 years as principal, Jane has retired from teaching. She remains head of the Amasango charity and has devoted herself to being an advocate for these neglected children. Long-time deputy Linda Ngamlana is now the principal. She aims to see the school offering much-needed vocational training as well as academics. It has been a journey from just a job application to now an overwhelming passion to develop these pupils. When I applied for a post at Amasango, I didn't even know what the school was all about until I entered the school. And I could see that, wow, these children share the same background as I do. I come from the same township and 
I understand what they are going through. I learned a lot from Jane. Jane is very, very passionate about this school. I do get advice from her and when I get stuck, I contact her. Even when we were working together, when I was deputizing for her, we used to share a lot. She told me that she gained a lot of information from me, which I didn't believe, but she said, Linda, I gained a lot from you. <laughs> I also gained a lot from Jane. She's a remarkable woman. Most of our staff are not trained for the job at Amasango to deal with the kind of learners with psychosocial problems. They learn on the job. We want a person who is keen to learn, not a person who is telling himself that he knows everything, with a vision to bring about a change, eager to make a difference in another person's life. Friends of Amasango is a charity organization in the UK that supports the school with funding, such as uniform, rent for past pupils who are at high school because we still give support to those who pass grade seven. Also food for children. Yes, there is a nutrition program which is offered by the Department of Education, but it's not enough. It's samp and beans today. So um, the children get a fortified porridge first thing in the morning in the classroom. Then they get their bread and drink at break and then a plate of cooked food at lunchtime every day and it's different every day. It's critical because a lot of our children don't eat at home at all. Um, a lot of them are totally dependent on the school for their food. We also give them a small food parcel on a Friday. We have a holistic approach to education and to the children. And for Tosa boys, they will never be accepted as adult members of society if they don't go through the traditional initiation school. And so we put this to our funders in England and they agreed to sponsor boys to go to initiation school. This important rite of passage is actually supervised by Amasango's male staff. I organize for them almost everything, like the basics that they are going to need there. One of Mr. Tsolakile's initiates, Tempinkosi, has just returned from his time in the bush. I go around and check every time when they are there, so that they, if they have a problem, they are going to attend that one immediately. Tempinkosi always loved dogs. He now works for the SPCA and enjoys all the aspects of caring for his furry friends. Washing them and take a walk with them, and feeding them, yeah. The importance of male role models for our boys cannot be overstated. And we are really blessed in having Mr. Tsolekile and Des, Mr. Mnila, to be male role models as teachers. We are just so grateful for the role played by men, from the cleaners to the security guards. They are all involved in building the children up, showing them how real men behave. Amasango continues to play a parental role long after their pupils have graduated. Just because they have passed grade seven doesn't mean anything in their home lives has changed. Teachers still play an active support role. Past pupils Unati and Pakamani spend many Saturday mornings working with Jane in her beloved garden. To me, it's a skill, a skill that I can share with others. It makes me feel more responsible. But the support is practical as well as emotional. And now that I'm at high school, Amazon continues to help me from electricity, groceries, uniform, stationery and push clothes to help even more. 
Jane's pride in her pupils is so deep, it is akin to that of a glowing parent. Both of them have had to cope without parents as they went to high school. And Pakamani lives totally alone. Unati is taking responsibility for two younger brothers. They have to see to the cooking of the food. They have to see that they are ready for school. They are really committed to building their lives. They came to us as young boys who had serious psychosocial problems and they've grown into responsible young men who stand for themselves and who take responsibility for others as well. And I'm very proud of them. Something else that nurtures Amasango's kids is the position of a dedicated learner support agent. Organising things like social grants, ID books and food parcels, she also makes home visits to understand their realities. And the time that was for Mana, Dan of Yol Cool, Ogbanti Sabins of Yana Banduan. Kuba Abanduana, Kufman Sega, Bakrit Shabangazi, a school win. Ipele Vig, Umdana, a Zain Sugu, a Zimbalo, and I eat a banga Ivig. Ufman Sega in the Uba Abando Abazali, Abaltatu Kanduva, a Banduan in Babo. Uzakumtini, Kayeso is Umzal. Go the <laughs> We work with children who have seen and experienced stuff that most of us have only read about but they've never had the opportunity to play. And somehow, through timetabling in time for educational games, jigsaw puzzles, etc., and free play with toys, we slowly unlock the child inside the hard little adult. The Snakes and Ladders is probably the most educational game that there is. You learn amazing things from Snakes and Ladders. You learn to wait for your turn. You learn that you can think you're winning and you lose. You can think you're losing and you win. You can learn not to kill someone just because they laugh at you. And finally, if you steal the dice, you can't play tomorrow. Rebuilding lives through education involves far more than just three meals and bookwork. Extramurals like dance, athletics, choir and marimbas play a pivotal role. Because we are out of uh, the formalities of the classroom. So we are together and in fact we are enjoying music. I can see one member of your crew has a, a tattoo which says music is life. To them music is food. During the teaching hours, more especially after break, they become drowsy. They want to sleep. They have their lunch. And immediately when you say you are going out for marimbas, whew, the excitement is there. So you can see that they are enjoying it a lot. And also you can take note of their talents, their skills, the inborn skills are there. You know, if we are giving them some work to write every now and again, to them it's tedious. This is a, it will be a tedious task, but 
When you say go to play, you can see that they can easily express themselves. If a child has experienced a joyful event, you can see, and when there's sadness, you can easily take note of that. So extra murals are so important in the whole timetable of the school. Not only do the pupils enjoy them, but they also excel, with numerous EP representatives. Our Stedford Golds are also garnered by the various disciplines. The Amasango Marimbas recently won first prize in the Eastern Cape Marimba Championship. And I even went to compete with the province last year in East London, and uh, we won a trophy there. Sianda's life was filled with drugs and crime, but all the muggings and house break-ins finally caught up with him. The police caught me one day, and I was thrown to prison, and I stay at jail. He found himself a young man, trapped for two years inside the horrors of an adult prison. I decided at one night I must quit everything, I must quit smoking and every other things. Then I started to read the Bible every day. The book of Revelation, it has motivated me. It talks about the new heaven and the new earth and things that are going to happen. So it tells that if you are not changed, you need to change before it's too late. Many people go to prison, but not everyone changes their lives. When Siander came out of jail, he turned to his old school. But due to his prior delinquency, Jane was unsure. Early in the morning, I started with a prayer. Then I told Mama Jane, I am a changed man. I want any education, but Mama Jane, told me that, Sian, I will give you only one chance, and I promise Mama Jane that I will behave. Despite being an adult in primary school, he drew strength from his faith. It was not difficult for me because I was so motivated. It is the prayer and the belief that God is existing. And he continued to thrive as he went through high school. I go to Nyalusa, and there I became a leader a head boy of the school. From criminal to head boy of a major high school, Siander's story is remarkable. I was feeling like I am Mandela and the first <laughs> He was also a peer educator for the police. He toured South African schools, speaking about crime and doing his best to deter our youth from ending up in jail as he did. Not only is he now a successful computer technician, he is also a new father. I am so happy that day I was holding him the whole day. <laughs> I am the father now, so I need to achieve so that I can gain the dignity to be a father. Due to the therapeutic nature of working with clay, pottery is a mandatory subject for all Amasango learners. Our children come from difficult backgrounds, violent backgrounds. Uh, some parents are alcoholics, they see fights at home and uh, all the ugly th things in life. Some um, start experimenting with drugs at the age of nine. Some of them don't understand the difference between colours. With art, they need concentration, good eye-hand coordination. It is another area where the pupils have excelled. Art is free for, for, for everyone. They don't have to, to be able to write or to read. Uh, our children have been entering a competition of various um, art forms and winning gold medals. It has been a highlight of my life to see them uh, competing with children who come from private schools. They compete under the same level and I was very proud. After finishing high school in a town with such high unemployment, Sukasani's prospects were few. So he decided to start his own small business. Selling everyday goods like padlocks, hats and wallets, he has proven that you can be an entrepreneur in any circumstance. My life before I came here, like things were very hard, you know, because of I, I grew up and I was born without the father next to me and without the family. I used to stay everywhere, but the things and the situation where I would be staying won't be good and to struggle to not get stuff to go to school. 
you know, to not get shoes to go to school, food to eat, clothes to wear. It was like really difficult for me until one day I came here. Despite his background, the school's unique approach soon had him back on track. It was very easy to catch up and also when we performed very well, it was always like because of margin will give us a good recognition, like to uplift our performance. We'll always get chocolates from her, like, you know, this something that was motivating that you guys are doing good. American volunteers who visited Amasango from Syracuse University were so affected by the school, they started their own charity in Grahamstown. Partnering with past pupil Zukasani, they formed Nkululeko, a structured homework club tutoring vulnerable high schoolers all over Grahamstown. Like this, this guy was motivating me mostly. Jason Torriano is in New York, Matt Kellen. You know, those guys, they're still like good guys in which I'm working for them now for this program. It's called Nkululeko, running around Grahamstown for personal development of youth. It runs after school. It's more for tutoring learners. They provide guidance and support not only with schoolwork, but also the children's personal lives. So mentors like Sukasani have broken the cycle of poverty and neglect and become role models for a whole new generation of youth. When I'm thinking about Majin, Majin is one of my role models, like she's an ion. She's the best person that I ever see who's so strong, who can make it happen showing me a great direction, spiritual uplifting me, always like one, like she's always getting curious that don't do this, do this, which is I know sometimes I'm doing something wrong and she's always there. I wish I can be like her to them. That's one of my dreams, you know, to be an example. A third Amasango school started in Aliwil North in 1995. Initially, Jane was principal of all three. Naturally, travelling between the three became too arduous, and so each school was appointed its own principal. Burus Geldenes is the headmaster at Aliwil North Amasango. Also housed in former railway buildings, they have more classroom space, and so are able to offer schooling up to grade nine, as well as computer skills. Though they face a lot of the same problems as the Grandstown School with many rundown buildings, they've recently been the recipients of Resilient, a school makeover charity. Buddhist shows Jane the planned developments for Phase 2, which will turn the old station buildings into more classroom space, enabling the school to offer classes all the way up to matric. Phase 1 of the repairs renovated the first half of the school buildings. That was also in a in a very bad state before they started there. And it looks lovely now. Nieuwe gieten, alle gieten, ook gieten afgehaald, die dak geverf. Die klaskamer zit elke keer nou zijn eie ingang. Want dit is maar een statiegebouw. Je moet dier een klas en dier die andere klas naar die toiletten bijvoorbeeld. Dan het nieuwe toiletten gebouwd. Het is zo'n 400.000 randse materiaal wat hulle alleen gebruik het. Die trots, jy kon het op hierdie kinderse gezicht te sien toe hulle na die uh, September vakantie, toe hulle in hierdie schoolgebouw kom. En selfs die onderwijzers, ou voel sommer, jy wil, jy wil school toe gaan, jy weet. Dis moos nou een mooi plek. When Boris initially heard about the school, he felt called to apply. Though something was holding him back, till a minister's wife offered him some sage advice. Ek het die pakket gevat en daar die tyd kon jy nie weer terug gaan nie. En sy het vir my gesê, as die Heere jou hier nodig het, dan sal hy jou hier gebruik. Ek het daai gevoel binnen in my gehad, dat hierdie kinders het niks. Hulle het niks. Ek weet, baie van hulle kom school toe net vir die kos. Het, ek net daai gevoel dat die kinders het my nodig. Want ek het geweet, die meeste van hulle was straatkinders. Eindelijk allemaal was straatkinders toe ons begin het. Ek het geweet, daar is geen stimulatie by die huis nie. Ek weet, die, die, die ouwe schen nie om nie. 
Dus hoe kom ik gevoel dat die wat ik kan voor jullie kunnen iets beteken, ik kan alles te mijn leer en motiveer om, om iets in die leven te worden. Want van ons kennis wat al hier deer is, het metriek gemaakt, politie, ik wil maar net voor jullie kennis net die beste geven. Drank is natuurlijk nou maar een groot probleem bij ons ouders. So die geschenken wat ons vir hulle hier gee, kom nie by hulle uit by die huis nie. Jy moet maar elke dag bid vir krag. Uh, jy, jy het baie nodig hier. Met die kinders moet die ouwe geduld he. Baie geduld he. Liefde is iets wat, wat die kinders ontzaglik, ontzaglik mis. Alle, alle het dit baie nodig, liefde. Ik heb nou voor die kinders voor ochtend gelezen uit Psalm 139. En dit het mij nou weer laat besef, je weet, als je net op je Heere vertrouw, kan jij goed doen wat boermenselijk is. Hij geeft je altijd de kracht, maar vertrouwen is eindelijk wat je moet doen in die Heere. Jij weet, je krijgt een uh, rove diamant. En ons moet nou hierdie rove diamant moet ons nou gaan poleren. Want alles is allemaal diamanten. Je weet, die kinders, uh, als je kijkt hoe rof hulle is terwijl je komt en je kijkt naar een jaar, dan kan je niet denken dat je het kunt. En dat moet je vier Je weet, je ziet iets gebeuren als je aandacht aan hulle gee. Dit is lekker als kennis wat jij in 12 jaar tijd, je kan niet eens meer die gezichten onthouden. Wat komt naar mijn kantoor toe? En net weer kom dankie sê meneer. Net kom hallo sê, kom dankie sê. Dat is lekker, je weet. Dan sê iets voor jou, jij het iets in een kunstse leven beteken. Ik heb nog vier jaar en je weet, vier jaar gaan zo so bitter vinnig voorbij. Ik dus zeg, vier jaar wil ik maar nog alles geven voor die school. The Eastern Cape is the poorest province in the country. It is often the most disparaged as well. So it is amazing to think that from this barren desert has sprung not one, not two, but three outstanding schools dedicated to nurturing and reforming some of South Africa's most neglected special needs kids. They have pioneered a new way of rehabilitation through faith-based education. Truly an oasis in the desert, these schools compare with the best practices worldwide. Things are developing nicely in Aliwell North, but in spite of the amazing work they do, her sister school does not have it easy. The biggest problem facing Grahamstown, Amasango, is not the neglected children or minimal financial aid, but an overcrowded and run-down school building on a tiny plot. Years of pleas to the Education Department for proper school facilities fell on deaf ears, so in desperation they turned to the Legal Resources Centre. The LRC got involved in this case in 2009 when we were approached by the Amasango School Governing Body because they had been promised a new school building by the Department of Education, but the building hadn't been forthcoming. So the LRC, on behalf of the school governing body, instituted legal action against the Department of Education to compel them to provide the interim structures to alleviate the severe overcrowding at the school. Then in the long term to consult with the school governing body, identify suitable land and build a proper school. There's been a lot of frustrations around implementing the court order, delays on the part of the department, failure, on the part of the department to communicate to try and deal with this matter with any kind of urgency and on the one hand trying to create a bit of space to see if the department and the school can't work it out without having to go back to court. We still don't have any um, progress on the permanent infrastructure. Uh, the department did identify a site which was the Benjamin Matlasela school only to find that the engineers came back to say that the building was structurally unsound but obviously it meant further delays and that the time now came for them to identify alternative land. 
Jane and Linda and Gamlana are working with the department to identify a site. The inertia by the civil servants on both sides of the game makes this new school building a bit of a pawn in the middle of a, of a battle to do nothing. They need a new school. They need to be supported. You are sitting with a with judgment that compels the government to build a school for Amasang as early as 2010. Without a proper school infrastructure, like a proper building with approaching facilities, and it makes it very difficult for kids to concentrate, and it affects even their performance. I think a new building will help to prepare these kids to become uh, responsible future citizens. One of the difficulties uh, we are experiencing is that uh, they keep on making empty promises. Some of the government officials, they are not so passionate about education. Uh, they are betraying the legacy and, and the wishes of our father of our democracy, Madiba, who placed the education as a priority, emphasizing that Every South African child must be afforded an opportunity to get education. Look, these are our kids, because there is no hospital that gave birth to a child called a street kid. So let's integrate them back to society. And Amasango is playing that role of being a midwife between society and these kids who have lost hope in terms of their future. Grahamstown's Bishop Antali has strong beliefs about the value of this faith-based school. Hey, it, it, it really touches my heart, that one, because uh, that is the heart of Jesus Christ. To fund such a school is, is really needed. Jesus didn't have a temple ministry. He had a public ministry. And then he assisted the brokenhearted, those who were uh, alongside the streets, taxi ranks in homes and all those places, and those who are seeking for help. The whole nation of South Africa needs that type of ministry. Despite the building conflicts, the District Director of Education sees the importance of Amasanga. What I see as a great value in it is that it takes children like those and, and uh, makes them to feel that they are worthwhile human beings and, and further that it assists that some of those children have gone from that school into the mainstream of schooling. The overwhelming argument that the school has advanced to me is to say, look, we could also provide career opportunities for these learners to help these children to be able to earn a living out of the schooling. It's not like they are just going to come out of grade nine and have nothing to do, but that the school would offer opportunities for them to have careers like welding, maybe bricklaying or something of that sort. So it, it's also vocational oriented. Children like that, not many of them are going to be academics, but some of the children could go into the vocational route and therefore earn a living. Going forward, I pray that indeed that there should be an appropriate structure so that we could get by and see this school growing to its intentions and expectations. In response to the school's case, the Eastern Cape Department of Education had this to say. Whilst the department admits the difficulties of the past, we wish to state that the budget allocation for the Gramstown Amasango School Building Project is as follows. 2015-16, 3 million rand. 2016-17, 13 million. 2017-18, 6.9 million rand. As soon as Makana Municipality make a suitable plot available, work can begin on this important project. We regret the delays and are determined to make up for them by going ahead with the new building project with all possible speed. While the Makana Municipality said in their response, As a municipality, we support all efforts for Amasango to get proper facilities which are conducive to learning. We are very much aware of their past struggles with the authorities to have the matter addressed. We hope this time around Amasango's efforts will bear positive results. Linda and Jane have identified a preferred site, which importantly is on flat ground. 
It also has connections for electricity, water and ablution facilities, as well as plenty of space for new classrooms, a playground, workshops and a sports field. But Jane's dream extends far beyond just a new school building. I really hope that this programme unlocks the doors to bringing Amasango schools all over the country. Volunteers play an important role in the school. Christina Thomas from Friends of Amasango in the UK has recently returned for her third volunteer trip. She recalls Jane explaining the realities of the school and her own initial experiences. I'd had Jane's very good briefing and she did for the first couple of days. Uh, she was very good and helpful. She said um, you've got to be a self-starter, you can't rely on having your hand held. And she said you could come into school on a Monday morning and a girl's been raped over the weekend and then the police are coming in because they've heard of somebody attacking somebody. She said the place is in chaos, there aren't enough teachers, so nobody's going to have time to look after you. And I, I just found that terrifying. <laughs> There was some huge crisis on day three. So when I went in school on the Wednesday, Jane was, I think she was in court with a child or something had happened. So I had to, yeah, I just had to find my way. The children are lovely, actually. They're very welcoming. They're curious. They're interested. There is a warmth and an openness and an interest and so on in volunteers. What keeps a volunteer coming back? I suppose it's friendship friendship with people in the school. I mean, I, it isn't cut off. I don't just sort of kind of go back to the UK and forget about it because I look after the uh, website. It's called the Friends of Amasango in the UK and we raise the money that comes out here and pays for the food and clothes and ongoing support in high school and also some of the uh, volunteer support, local volunteers here. We help with their stipends. We've got a strategy to try and get private schools to adopt Amasango as a charity and also uh, ro local rotary clubs. What it's given me I think is a kind of confidence that I didn't have before. I think after again after a few weeks or months you really learn that success looks completely different at Amasango. From time to time the school also hosts local volunteers Zamakolo Nguduka is an internationally recognised dance star who grew up in Grahamstown. This performer and director has played the West End, Broadway, and even entertained the Queen with his traditional dance. Impressed by the mission of the school, he has volunteered to give a masterclass to Amasango's traditional dance troupe. You'll find that the child is struggling with maths, is struggling with, with, with history or something else. It's not that just because that, that child is, 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 does not have a brain. You take that child, you use the same method of maths, you use it by playing marimbas. I mean, when you play marimbas, you're counting. You know, when you're dancing, you, we go five, six, seven, eight, you're counting, and when they catch that, it unlocks their mind. For me, at school, I couldn't grab that much, but when I went into dancing, I was I, I got straight A's. So the arts, it opens them up. And a school like Amasango, it takes the children, which are very violent, it takes them and it shows them how to unlock what is inside. You find that they are in a cocoon, they are locked inside. It's like they are in jail within life itself. Arts gives you confidence. Look at the, the children that were here, the more they dance, at first you feel they are, mm -mm -mm, but when they get it, you can see they become bright in their faces because they've got confidence. And that confidence translates or it transcends to your life in general. My life would have been totally different if I didn't have a grandmother um, who was loving me. And um, that love of a parent, it's what is needed in a child. That child needs nurturing and Amasango is doing absolutely that, exactly that. In the long run, you find that child 
when they unwind and the, when they take what's inside them and they start caring for other people as well, it's because of the love that they get from the teachers of Amasango. The impact of these schools has extended far further than anyone could have imagined. A lady did her PhD research on street children education in South Africa and she heard about us and came down um, to, to visit Amasango and see what we, do, we were doing. She was from Dresden in Germany. And when she entered the classrooms and saw the children doing proper school work and yet they were very age inappropriate, she said to me, this just gives me goose flesh. This is what I've been dreaming about. And subsequent to her visit to Amasango, the Dresden City Council have given the go ahead to start a school in Dresden. A tiny, run-down, humble building, which has resonated around the world. Through the work they do, people from Europe, the UK and USA have heard the call. They have come to see the incredible work of Amasango and learn how they can replicate it in their own communities. Looking back over 25 years, Jane reflects on the call of Amasango in her own life. I find it an enormous privilege to have been called and equipped to work with God's broken children, God's hurting children. And there are times when one gets very frustrated and there are times when one feels a total failure. But his love is new every morning. And I long for them to learn and know that as well. <laughs>